Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, the latest on the massive storm that has swept now across the country. It's still going. Tornadoes and several of them causing destruction and unfortunately death. Heavy snow, powerful winds, all with blizzard conditions in parts of the northern plains. We've got folks all over and I'll be tracking it as it heads toward the northeast. Then our ABC News exclusive with the family of the young boy who was thrown from a balcony at the Mall of America in 2019, speaking for the first time about that horrifying day and his miraculous recovery. Those stories and so much more coming up right here on GMA. Ahead in the next hour of GMSA, millions of Americans suffer from high blood pressure and doctors say one in eight of those who suffer from it don't even know they have it. Something that could be traumatic for their health. Just ahead, a warning sign or the warning signs to watch out so you can stay healthy and strong. Trans Guide right now, 410 at Marbach. Hopefully we will have a uh, fairly smooth commute compared to, compared to yesterday. We'll talk to RJ coming up on your Wednesday. Now at six, a scary notification from an area elementary school no parent wants to receive. A loaded gun brought to school by an eight-year-old student. How a teacher was able to intervene and potentially stop any harm from happening. Plus the latest on the fragile U.S. economy. What you need to know about the increase expected to be announced today. And let's look out there with a live cam, a little cooler this morning at 61 degrees. We'll take that, definitely. Live from Chase at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Cooler, but not cold yet. Good morning, everybody. We made it to Hump Day. It's Wednesday, December 14th. Thanks for joining us. Hope you're having a great week. Mark gave us a gift by washing his car yesterday. Oh, you're welcome, everybody. Yeah, I spent extra money washing the truck and uh, driving into work this morning. I was like, gosh darn it. <laughs> a couple little sprinkles yeah. out there. Uh, most everybody probably got away with a car staying clean. So. Okay, good. Most people. Sorry you had to be the, the <laughs> guinea okay. pig there. I'll but. be the guinea pig now and then for you. <laughs> anyway, yes, it is cooler this morning. Much, much drier air. That's the, the big thing you're going to notice. And it's, as you mentioned, not cold yet, but just wait till tomorrow morning. So we do have a lot of uh, clear skies. Uh, well, st still some clouds, but I mean clear enough as far as any fog or mist or anything like that. And there's a plane heading out to uh, Areas unknown. Couple leftover sprinkly showers here and there. You know, just one or two of them. One up there right around uh, Canyon Lake. And then in and around town, we just have one or two of these little sprinkly showers there. Some of this may actually be evaporating before it reaches the ground. Uh, obviously, some is, but the air is so, so dry out there. So just, uh, you know, be on the lookout for a couple of damp spots on the roads. This is kind of the exception rather than the, uh, the rule. And that will be it. They'll be hanging around, you know, a couple of leftovers this morning and then everything gets on out of here. 61 in town, mid 50s hill country. Now we're still almost 20 degrees above normal, but yes, it is much more pleasant when you step outside. Wind gust 22 at the airport, 21 Stinson, 18 at Canyon Lake. It is going to be breezy throughout the day. Molds Mott, it's going to be interesting to see what Mount Cedar does since we've had north to northwesterly winds most of yesterday afternoon, overnight, and this morning. Also, it's going to be interesting to see what then tomorrow's count is, given the fact it's going to be windy all day. We will dip into the upper 50s as the morning rolls on. Just barely still got that cloud cover out there acting like a bit of a blanket. Mid 60s at noon, plenty of sunshine, windy winds out of the northwest, 15, 20 miles per hour, gusting from there and a high temperature today up to 67. Subtract about 30 degrees from that and that's where our low is going to be tomorrow. Yeah, it's going to be cold the next couple of mornings and then it's going to be just one of those stay inside kind of weekends. Details on that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority getting ready to hit the roads. RJ Marquez is behind the wheel this morning, both hands uh, on yes. the steering wheel. What's up? <laughs> always, always, Mike. 10 and 2. Got to keep them at 10 and 2 at all times. Um, all right, as we take a look at real quick at our Trans Guide traffic cameras this morning, uh, again, no major incidents to talk about when it comes to any sort of crashes or any sort of major delays. The one thing that Trans Guide wanted me to kind of notify our viewers about was this uh, closure here on Loop 410 westbound at Ingram Road. I'm going to get out of the way here. Um, it is at the Calebra exit. So if you are heading out into this area or have to take this exit, just kind of keep in mind that this is close uh, for the moment. Again, Loop 410 westbound at Ingram North, that exit, the Calebra exit, the westbound lane. So just kind of keep that in mind as you make your way out. Um, other than that, uh, smooth sailing across the San Antonio area, as we always say, green on the screen. That is good news, um, especially uh, up in our 
kind of our busier areas. Uh, we've been following this stall throughout the morning here on the near northeast side at I-35 in Eisenhower, but again, not causing any major delays. Uh, there's a little bit of a slowdown here uh, south side, here far south side, past uh, 281-1604 at uh, near Mitchell Lake. I'll check up that here in just a little bit. It looks like both the north and southbound lanes have been delayed for just a little bit, but right now Transguide is not showing us any major issues in that area, but that is something that I will check out here in just a bit. But again, smooth sailing so far. Far. If you need to head out, this would be a good time to do so as things are expected to get a little bit busy as we make our way through our 6 o'clock to 7 a.m. hour. Mark and Stephanie, back to you guys. RJ, thank you, sir. Some parents in shirts Cibolo Universal City ISD may feel on edge this morning when they send their kids to school. This is after a student brought a loaded gun to a district elementary school yesterday. Sarah Costa joins us live here in the studio with what we know about the incident. Good morning, morning. Sarah. Good morning, Mark. Good morning, Steph. This is the kind of notification no parent really wants to receive. That student who brought that loaded gun along with some knives to school was eight years old. This happening at Rose Garden Elementary School yesterday around lunchtime. So here's what we know. In a letter sent to parents, the school's principal says the third grader showed off the gun to another student during lunch. A teacher was notified and was able to find the student and take the loaded gun that was wrapped in a piece of clothing along with two knives. Shirts police were called to the elementary school right away. Police are still investigating and trying to determine if there was a threat towards students or staff. In a statement, Shirts Police Chief James Lowry said, quote, it is unfortunate that this incident has occurred in our city, but I am thankful for the collaborative work that has been accomplished by and being conducted to keep our schools safe. Shirts PD says they are working with the Bear County District Attorney's Office to determine if charges would be filed against the eight year old student or the child's parents. Mark. Sarah, thank you. New this morning, a man is in critical condition after accidentally shooting himself in the face. Happened around one this morning on East Highland near Rigsby Avenue. Police tell us he was mishandling the gun when it went off. Other people were in the home at the time. Fortunately, they were not hurt. The investigation is ongoing. Emotional testimony from a sheriff's deputy who lost his two year partner in a confrontation with a man waving a gun. We learned yesterday why the Bear County canine Chucky was not wearing his protective vest. The handler who cared for and watched over Chucky told jurors what happened at the scene after a chase with Matthew Mireles. Handler BCSO deputy Kevin Ross Ross Musson testified about his partnership with Chucky and how in the quickly changing standoff, he was unable to reach the gear for the dog. It was a revolving situation to where once he hit the, right when his truck stopped, the helicopter's telling us he's shooting at us, the truck rolls back, hits our car and he's walking away. So we're moving to stay with him, to have him in eyesight, to try to contain him. And with it going on, we're still moving away from my car. My car's disabled because of the truck that hit it, and we just couldn't get to it at the time. If found guilty of the charges, Mireles is facing anywhere from 25 years to life in prison. Right now on KSAT.com, hear more from Deputy Rasmussen's testimony about the moments his partner was shot. Well, today the Federal Reserve is expected to raise interest rates for the final time this year. The central bank has been trying to slow down borrowing in the economy to tame inflation, while new government data shows record high prices could finally be letting up. ABC's Elizabeth Schulze has more from Washington. With the Federal Reserve set to hike interest rates for the seventh time this year, promising new signs that red-hot inflation is cooling off. Consumer prices rose 7.1 percent in November from a year ago, the slowest pace since the end of last year. Americans' costs declining for gas, airfares, used cars, and medical care. Make no mistake, prices are still too high. We have a lot more work to do, but things are getting better, headed in the right direction. The inflation report is welcome news for the Fed, as it's expected to raise interest rates today by half a percentage point. That's a historically big move, but smaller than the past four rate hikes. The Fed can be more comfortable in slowing down its pace of rate hikes going forward into 2023. They're much more likely to do adjustments in the policy rate of 25 basis point increments. And that way they can see if this positive trend in inflation continues. 
The Fed is walking a fine line, trying to raise borrowing costs just enough to slow down spending and lower prices, but not tip the economy into a recession. But for some businesses, higher interest rates are already dampening the outlook. This is our four-point welder. Richard Kennel is the president of a family-owned factory that manufactures windows in Virginia. There will be a recession. No question. Oh, no question. I've been doing this for 46 years. I've seen many recessions and I've seen many booms. And I'm not naive about the fact that the business cycle is going to happen again. Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell will speak this afternoon. Traders on Wall Street will be closely listening to his comments on the jobs market and the impact of higher wages on inflation. Elizabeth Schulze, ABC News, Washington. And back here at home, things could be taking a turn in the right direction for the housing market in San Antonio. Recent data shows positive growth next year. Home sales are anticipated to climb 2.5 percent next year, with average prices increases by 4.6 percent. That is according to Realtor.com, who analyzes home sales and price data for the nation's largest metros. This production growth in pricing could mean a rebound for the San Antonio market after home prices declined to 5.5 percent since June. We have that full story on our website at kset.com. Let's talk about our San Antonio Spurs. A big assist for Elf Louise last night at the AT&T Center. Check it out. Trey Jones and Devin Vassell help brighten up Christmas for Eastside families with some presents and Spurs tickets. That is Jakob Pertl dressed up as Santa. Spurs will try to keep their three-game win streak alive tonight versus the Portland Trailblazers. That game is at 7 o'clock at the AT&T Center. Go Spurs, go. Yes, definitely nice to see them win again. Time now, 610 and 61 degrees for now. Still to come, the family of the boy who was hurt after being pushed off a balcony at Mall of America is speaking out. You don't want to miss what they have to say. That's coming up in your GMA First Look. Plus, big honors for Texas Biomedical Research Institute, what it means for the Alamo City. And outside with live cam, looking pretty good out there. 61 degrees and she hates extra attention, but our GMSA executive producer, Joy Presley, is in the booth right now. Yay. Today is her birthday. Happy birthday. And we're going to be celebrating this entire hour. We also have, <laughs> we're setting aside our entire 9 o'clock newscast for her as well. <laughs> Just kidding. Be right back. Just about 6.15 now to a big boost for Texas Biomedical Research Institute here in San Antonio. A federal agency is now recognized as the only prime contractor in Texas to be able to work with the federal level to protect against pandemics and bioterrorism. Being named a prime contractor opens Texas Biomed up to receiving up to $100 million in funding over the, just the next five years. That money comes from BARDA. That's the Biomedical Advanced Research and Development Authority. BARDA oversees the development of vaccines, treatments, and diagnostics for public health emergencies. And check this out. This is a new video of the UTSA graduation ceremonies that happened yesterday at the Alamo Dome. Now, nearly 3,000 graduates walked the stage in San Antonio's largest commencement. And get this, nearly 45% of graduates were the first in their families to earn a college degree. Congratulations to all you December graduates. Yes, congratulations. Time now, 6.15. Let's check back with RJ Marquez. All right, yeah, always love to see uh, people walking the stage there. Big moment for them. Congratulations to them. And uh, things looking pretty good right now as far as traffic is concerned. And uh, things starting to build up just a little bit, but no major uh, issues right now on our roadways to speak of. As we take a look here at our wider map, we've been talking about this stall over here on uh, the near northeast side, so it does not appear to be causing any traffic delays, but it's been there for a little while, so it's something that I've kind of been continuing to monitor. Uh, it seems like crews are taking the to having a little bit more trouble removing that vehicle from the shoulder lanes, I-35, uh, the northbound lanes there. And uh, there was something that we just got uh, just into us right now. And actually, you can see it just showed up on our maps. Um, this was a crash that's being reported on a little bit of the far east side. So this is outside Loop 1604, northbound at I-10 East. It was initially reported on the San Antonio Fire Department page. Uh, so I'll continue to follow this as we get along. I mean, this is within the past like couple of minutes or so. And you can see there's already been a little bit of a traffic buildup in that area. So a little bit further east, uh, again, Loop 1604 northbound at I-10 East. And it appears 
to be outbound, not headed inbound. But again, trying to check with Transguide here in just a bit to see what exactly is happening out there on the roadways. And again, taking a look a little bit closer into the downtown area, 281 Loop 410 West. Things looking uh, pretty, pretty good in that area there. Uh, US 90 at Medio Creek and I-37 at Houston. So yeah, guys, things looking pretty solid as we make our way throughout the morning. But again, you know, kind of gets a little busy during this time right now. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Yeah, RJ, we rarely have you on the morning mm -hmm. show, so I know we have you walking back and forth quite I a know, bit. I know, yeah. I am. I'm doing a little bit of walking here, you're, getting you're, some steps in early. Yeah, yeah. yeah. morning you're, exercise. You're there locked you down during KSAT News Now. <laughs> I am, yeah. yeah. You know, don't get a lot of movement there. We move the desk, but we don't actually move physically too much. Well, you get to yeah. draw. Well, I do get to draw. That I, I enjoy that segment, <laughs> yes. They have, they have arts and crafts. <laughs> I didn't know they had arts and crafts. I know, we need yeah. arts and crafts. <laughs> like kindergarten, we get to draw. Yes. And we get to ride the school bus, too. Yay! So. Uh, bus this morning, grab a jacket. We are going to be in the uh, mid upper 50s around the area. A leftover shower, especially heading up uh, 35 in towards San Marcos, Austin area. And then later on this afternoon, just a great looking day. Uh, temperatures closer to normal highs, 67. It is going to be on the windy side. And then make sure you do have a heavy jacket handy for tomorrow as well as Friday and really the next few days. All right, this picture, remember the uh, movie Arthur? Way back when, the one with Dudley Moore, and when his butler was sick in bed in the hospital, and he put that cowboy hat on him, and he had that stern look, he goes, before I begin to die, please remove the hat. That's the look on this cat's face. Remember that, Mark? Way back, way I back when. Early yeah. 80s. It's been a long, long time, and they've remade it since Charlie then. Charlie Boyd doesn't look overly mm -hmm. happy right there with that hat on. Very cute, though. Thank you very much for the KSAC Connect picture. All right, we've got, uh, still you can see some clouds hanging out here, but the view is very, very clear compared to uh, yesterday when we had all that mist and drizzle and everything else. As I was talking about, you head up to the north and to the northeast, and you're going to run into showers and thunderstorms up here right around San Marcos, Austin, and those are continuing to work their way on out of the area. A little bit closer into town, uh, there may have been a few little sprinkly showers here and there, but it looks like most everything has come to an end. If there's a leftover little shower, shower here and there, that's just going to be the straggler. 61 in town, mid-50s hill country. We're still much closer to the normal high than the normal low. We're almost 20 above that, but the humidity is much lower, and it's kind of gusty out there. Winds gusting to uh, 22 miles per hour. So on the uh, tail end of this, and I want to uh, jump past this picture here and get into what is going to be happening this upcoming week. So we've got the front that moved through yesterday. We get a reinforcing shot of cooler air coming in for the weekend. And then Climate Prediction Center for the 20th through the 26th does have below normal, below average temperatures. Average being low 60s uh, once we get in toward Christmas, the end of next week and toward Christmas weekend, and lows being in the low 40s. So we are looking at below average temperatures. Now, the big question is just exactly how cold is it going to get? So so we've got this low, that's the one up to the north of us, huge, huge storm complex in the central portion of the country. That's what pulled in this front through here. We stay on the cooler side the next couple of days, get a little bit of a reinforcing shot of cool air coming in here for the weekend, and we'll also have some showers around here with this little bit of moisture returning. Then we've got this batch of really, really cold air, which is going to start to work its way in from Canada. The big question is, though, just how far south does this come? That's still not written in stone yet. Some computer models have this thing just barreling down here. Others have it sort of grazing the area. So that's one thing we're going to have to continue to watch over the next couple of days. I mean, we're still, before that moves on in here, we're still more than a week away from that. So a lot can change, obviously, between now and then. 64 at noon today, breezy. And then a high temperature today makes it up to 67. Like I said, a lot closer to a normal high. And then we get into tomorrow. Yeah, it's going to be cold in the morning. Bundle up, nice big bowl of oatmeal tomorrow, 38 degrees. Same thing on Friday. Beautiful day tomorrow. Then Friday, a little bit cooler with that front moving through here. And then cooler still over the weekend, only 50 on Saturday. A couple of showers. Good day to kind of hunker down inside. Back to 60 Monday and Tuesday. Not too bad. No. More like December. Yes, indeed. So, and we'll keep watching that next batch of cold air for late next week. Late next week. Mm -hmm. Got it. Okay, thanks, Mike. 621, 61 degrees. Bipartisan group of lawmakers working on a bill to ban TikTok. Details ahead in your morning consumer news. 
moderate to severe eczema. It doesn't care if you have a date, a day off, or a double shift. Make your move and get out in front of eczema with steroid-free Sabinko. Not an injection. Sabinko is a once-daily pill for adults who didn't respond to previous treatments and is proven to help provide clearer skin and relieve itch fast. Sabinko continuously treats eczema whether you're flaring or not. Sabinko can lower your ability to fight infections, including TB. Before and during treatment, your doctor should check for infections and do blood tests. Tell your doctor if you've had hepatitis B or C, have flu-like symptoms, or are prone to infections. Do not take with medicines that prevent Prevent blood clots, serious, sometimes fatal infections, lymphoma, lung, skin, and other cancers. Serious heart-related events and blood clots can happen. People 50 and older with heart disease risk factors have an increased risk of serious heart-related events or death with JAK inhibitors. It's time to get out in front of eczema. Ask your doctor about once daily Sabinko. In this morning's GMA First Look, an ABC News exclusive. He was thrown three stories. I mean, they're not like normal stories in a house, three stories. The family of then five-year-old Landon, who was thrown from the third floor railing, reaching a settlement in its lawsuit against the Mall of America. What did the doctors tell you? All of them. This is a miracle. He should not be here. And now, for the first time, the family is speaking out to Good Morning America. It's been three and a half years now. Why now do you want to tell your story? I was frozen in time until I was able to speak. And now is the time that is right in our lives where we've done a lot of healing, where it's time to move forward with the story of the miracle of Landon. And coming up at 7 a.m., we'll hear from the little survivor at the heart of this story, eight-year-old Landon. With your GMA First Look, I'm Eva Pilgrim, ABC News, New York. A new push in Congress to ban TikTok here in the U.S. Lawmakers have introduced bipartisan legislation amid growing national security concerns that the Chinese-owned app could be used to spy on millions of Americans. The bills in the House and Senate would also block other social apps from China and Russia. Apple has released a new app. Freeform is a virtual whiteboard that lets up to 99 friends work together on an infinite canvas. Freeform can be used on iPhones, iPads, or Macs. And finally, some new features on Instagram. A new notes function allows users to add 60 character status updates to the profiles and a be real clone called Candid Stories that's in the testing phase. The new feature recreates be reals daily selfies, which is kind of a thing right now. I guess so. Time now 626 and 61 degrees for now. Let's look out there with Transguy looking over at I-35 at New Braunfels Avenue. Things are moving, but we will be checking in with our RJ Marquez very soon. Outside with live cam, we've had some sprinkles around overnight. The clouds are kind of here or there, down to about 61 degrees, and there will be a noticeable chill in the air at some point. Good morning, everybody. It is Wednesday. We made it hump day. It is December 14th. Happy Wednesday. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, a little cold this morning at 61 degrees, but today is a day to dust off your heavy coat for even cooler weather. Yeah, yeah. Mike was giving me a weird look, kind of almost side eye. Did I uh -oh. say something that no, didn't no, no, fit? Not okay. A, not, okay, not, not at all. Side so, eye. Okay. It was, it was the earlier good. comment. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, anyway, yeah, a heavy coat for tomorrow morning. Mm -hmm. uh, this morning, yeah, grab a jacket. It is uh, chilly out there. It's windy all day long, too. And finally, we're going to have a high temperature today near the normal high in the mid 60s. We've got, uh, as Mark was talking about, a few leftover clouds right now, 61 degrees. So we're still almost 20 above the normal low temperature in the low 40s, but it's lower than yesterday and that number dew point continues to drop off. It is less than half of what it was at this time yesterday. So that much drier air out there winds out of the north to northwest 15 16 miles per hour and we do have a couple of gusts out there and as uh, Mario mentioned a couple of leftover sprinkles earlier. Pretty much everything is out of the metropolitan area and continuing to get on out of our area. Still a few leftover uh, showers here in western Gonzales County moving up toward Luling and that's it. We're on the tail end of uh, everything. Now, if you go up 35, you are going to run into some more showers and thunderstorms well north of Austin. 61 in town, 59 Helotus, uh, Rio Medina, 55 in comfort. And yeah, those winds out of the northwest gusting to 22 at the airport, 18 Pleasanton, 19 in Balverde, and it will be windy throughout the day. 
going to be interesting when the updated allergen count comes out to see what happened to Mountain Cedar with these northwesterly winds. Mold is on the moderate side as of yesterday's count. So mostly cloudy. That leftover little shower here or there, especially well up to the northeast. Breezy this morning and then plenty of sunshine today. Really, really nice day. Mid upper 60s and again, it is going to be windy now. Very cold tomorrow morning. It's going to be about mm, upper 30, so more than uh, 20 degrees colder than what it is right now. Sunshine in the afternoon, once again, 60s. Then Friday is going to be colder. Then we get into the weekend. We get a, a reinforcing shot of some cooler air coming in here. So lots of clouds, couple of showers. Temperatures on Saturday, only 50. Good day to kind of hunker down inside. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Mr. Marquez, what's going on? All right, Mike, uh, 630. That means that things are getting a little bit busier out there on the roadways. And we just got uh, this report here. I-35 at Watson Lane. You can see Transguide. I've been communicating with them, just trying to figure out what exactly is going on there. So I think they're adjusting the cameras right now because I was literally just texting them <laughs> to just try and figure out some more information. So we'll get some more on this here in just a bit once they readjust some of the cameras out there. I-35 at Watson Lane, so just keep in mind if you are headed out into that area on the northeast side. Uh, the other big things that we're following so far this morning is uh, there is a crash right here uh, near 90, but it's off of Highway 90. It's on Castroville Road at Southwest 36, so uh, that's not affecting the main lanes of 90 as you head in and out of uh, the San Antonio area. Now, the one that uh, was reported about 30 minutes ago, this is a uh, reported crash out there, Loop 1604 northbound at I-10 East, and over the past 15 minutes or so, you can see that traffic has been building up in this area. It appears to be some of the eastbound lanes, so headed out of the San Antonio area, but we always know that, uh, especially on the other side, things tend to slow down as well. So again, we will continue to get more information on this crash right here or this incident here. I-35 at Watson Lane. And uh, again, this is just being reported. I'm checking in with Transguide to see the very latest at the moment. So that's what we're dealing with right now as things start to pick up a little bit more on our roadways this Wednesday morning. Mark and Stephanie, back to you guys. RJ, thank you very much. New this morning, the newest elected official over in Uvalde has taken her seat. On the city council, Eloisa Medina took the oath of office during last night's meeting. She represents District 3, the seat once held by former Uvalde CISD police chief Pete Adedondo. Adedondo surrendered his seat after not attending three consecutive council meetings following the controversy after the shooting at Robb Elementary School. The supply level for blood and platelets here in the San Antonio metro area is at critically low levels. Our Sarah Costa joins us live in the studio. And Sarah, why is the need so great right now? Good morning, Mark. Good morning, staff. This is something, unfortunately, we see almost every holiday season because during the holidays, the South Texas Blood and Tissue Center says they have fewer donors and road accidents also increase. It's why the center is urging the public to donate blood and platelets to support patients in the community, over 300 donors a day are needed this holiday season. The nonprofit announcing the shortage yesterday. The shortage directly impacts patients with traumatic injuries or undergoing surgeries, transfusions between cancer treatment and those healing from other diseases. As a result of the shortage, many patients have to wait for blood transfusion. The chief operating officer for the nonprofit says the holidays are a great time to donate and give the gift of life. And it only and it takes less than an hour. The largest need right now is for type O blood. Blood and platelet donations can be made at nine donor rooms. Rooms walk-ins are welcome. To make an appointment or find a donor room, just visit SouthTexasBlood.org. Mark. Thank you very much, Sarah. New this morning, a 24-year-old softball coach arrested after she was accused of having an inappropriate relationship with one of her players, according to Converse Police. Miranda Sandoval was arrested Tuesday afternoon on a charge of indecency with a child by contact. According to a news release, police on Monday met with the parents of a female juvenile regarding the allegations. Sufficient evidence was found to support the allegations and arrest warrant was obtained. Today marks 10 years since the school tragedy in Newtown, Connecticut, which marked the beginning of a new chapter in America's struggle with gun violence. ABC's Andrea Fujii looks at what's changed since that day and what hasn't. This morning, remembering the Sandy Hook Elementary Massacre 10 years later. It was December 14, 2012, when 20 first graders and six educators were killed in Newtown, Connecticut. Jackie Hegarty was there, a second grader at the time. It's really hard to process that, and I'm still processing it 10 years later. No one deserves to, you know, 
see the things I saw when I walked out or to hear the things I heard. Now 17, she says her grief has fueled her push for new gun laws as president of the Junior Newtown Action Alliance. We're still looking for a federal assault weapons ban, but we're making progress. In the last decade, Connecticut has passed several gun reform measures, including an assault weapons ban and mandatory background checks. Other states followed suit. But since Sandy Hook, the nation has seen nearly 1,000 school shootings. After the massacre at Robb Elementary in Uvalde, Texas this year, Congress passed the first federal gun safety law in 30 years, tightening background checks and offering so-called red flag grants for states to help police and families confiscate guns from people considered a threat. But advocates like Nicole Hockley, whose son Dylan died at Sandy Hook, insist more must be done. These acts of violence are preventable and that we all have a role in doing something about it. Meanwhile, support for the Sandy Hook families is coming in from around the country. Just released at midnight. Cheryl Crow's new song, I Shall Believe, honoring the victims. I shall be. Connecticut's governor is introducing new gun control measures today aimed at changing concealed carry laws and requiring all gun dealers to be licensed. But opponents argue these new measures would punish law-abiding gun owners rather than targeting criminals. Andrea Fuji, ABC News, New York. And now to the massive storm blowing across the country spawned several tornadoes that wrecked buildings and injured a handful of people in Oklahoma and here in Texas. So much of the central United States is bracing for blizzard-like conditions in the northwest. An area stretching from Montana into western Nebraska and Colorado is under blizzard warnings. The National Weather Service said as much as two feet of snow is possible in some of the areas of western South Dakota and northwestern Nebraska. Ice and sleet were expected in the eastern Great Plains. And more with uh, on our forecast coming up with Mike Ostrade shortly. Now to new crash tests, raising concerns for millions of people who drive smaller SUVs. More than a dozen new vehicles were recently put to the test, and several got failing grades. Here's ABC's Andrew Dimber. The Insurance Institute for Highway Safety is out with results from new frontal crash tests that, for the first time, looked at how dummies in the back seat fared, and the news isn't good. For years, we have focused on the driver and the front seat passenger. Front seat occupants are now benefiting from technologies such as airbags and advanced seatbelt systems. The same level of technology often does not exist in the rear seat to protect those occupants. So we want to focus on that rear seat where you carry often the most vulnerable occupants such as children and elderly adults. 15 small SUVs were tested for how well they hold up structurally in a crash and the likelihood of injury in the back seat. Only the Ford Escape and Volvo XC40 received a good rating. The Toyota RAV4 was rated acceptable while Audi's Q3, the Nissan Rogue and the Subaru Forester were rated marginal. All the others, including models from Buick, Chevy, Honda, Hyundai, Jeep, Mazda, and Mitsubishi, receive the lowest rating of poor. As these results show, rear seat safety is lagging. It's time for us to focus on making the vehicle safe for all occupants. The Institute found the risk of fatal injury is 46% higher for backseat passengers than for drivers in the front. Experts are now urging car makers to bring all that sophisticated technology available in the front back into the rear seat. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. 640, 60 degrees. And after the break, we are talking about high blood pressure and why, what you need to know that could kill you. About 116 million Americans are living with high blood pressure. Keeping it under control is important for reducing your risk from everything from heart failure to dementia. Nancy Alvarez asked doctors what you should know about this silent killer. Nearly half of adults in the U.S. have high blood pressure, a condition that puts you at risk for heart disease and stroke. But there's a lot of people don't know about this common condition. We call it a silent killer because people don't pay much attention to it until you have what we call end organ damage. Most people with high blood pressure don't have symptoms unless their blood pressure is very high. That's why doctors say knowing your numbers matters. You need to know that number at the top of your brain, at the tip of your tongue, what's that number. A normal blood pressure reading is less than 120 over 80. Elevated blood pressure is between 120 and 129 over less than 80. Above that is considered high blood pressure. 
The good news? Experts say it's important to add a blood pressure monitor to your home first aid kit. We found them on Amazon for less than $40. But one reading likely won't cut it. We tell the patients that they need to get as many readings as possible because that gives us a better understanding of the true blood pressure. With what docs want you to know about blood pressure, I'm Nancy Alvarez reporting. Exactly 645. Let's check back with RJ Marcus. I see flashing lights over at I-35 at Watson. Yeah, guys, and uh, this has been something we're kind of mic around. Is your mic on, buddy? Yes. Okay, I hear us. I don't hear you. Maybe it's... Back on. Okay, it takes a second for it to pick up the Wi-Fi and all that stuff, and let's try, try it again. There we go. Yeah, there Yay, we go. Yay, there you are. Um, so I turned it off because I was actually on the phone with TransGuide right now okay. as we continue to follow several things that are happening across our area and uh, found out this is actually a little bit further out of the San Antonio area, so New Braunfels area, but people that are headed into either New Braunfels or San Antonio, keep this in mind, we have a major delay there. I-35, the southbound lanes at Watson Lane right there. So again, New Braunfels viewers, uh, just keep this in mind. If you are headed into the San Antonio area, this has become a pretty, pretty big mess there on the southbound lanes of I-35. As we take a look at our big map here, um, again, these uh, traffic mostly concern right now over here on the far east side. Uh, we mentioned the thing up in New Braunfels, but um, that's not showing up on our maps right now. Uh, this is the major incident that we're discussing. Again, I was just on the phone with TransGuide right now. Uh, it appears they are telling me that there's an 18-wheeler accident out here in the eastern part of Bayer County. And uh, this was initially reported here in I-10 and Loop 1604 North. But as you can see, it's kind of stretched out a little bit here. And now we're hearing that the eastbound lanes in this stretch of area have been shut down. So there is an 18-wheeler accident, according to TransGuide. That's what they're telling me. And uh, up here in Field Road, that's basically where uh, this accident is now being reported, this 18-wheeler accident. But uh, basically, these could be sort of related incidents as we move along the morning. So again, things getting pretty busy out here, the eastern part of Bear County. As we take one more look here at this transguide shot here out in the New Braunfels area, again, Watson Lane, the southbound lanes of 35. So just kind of keep that in mind. A little bit further out of our general area, but of course, people tend to obviously make their way southbound into San Antonio. Yeah, and File Road, that's right. File Road is the other incident that we're looking at right now in eastern Bear County. Things are getting busy on the roads. Before we move Yay! on, yes. joy to the world is not just a Christmas carol. <laughs> joy Presley is the glue, the, the person yep. that keeps this crazy uh, train on the track. Yep. She's the executive producer for all of GMSA, and today is her birthday. Happy birthday, Joy. Have an awesome day. And you know what? Celebrate all month. This now, is your time. Now, she's actually boothing our show yes. today, which happens once in a blue moon. Are you yeah. surprised, Joy? Are you surprised, Joy, or did they sneak this in? Or they snuck, snuck it in. in. I'm surprised you didn't <laughs> find it and take it out to, make, you know, to get more time to weather. <laughs> <laughs> but happy, happy birthday, birthday, Joy. We love you yeah. so much, and, uh, and happy, happy, happy birthday. And you saw the smiles on her face in those yeah. pictures. That's every single day. Yes. No matter what's going yeah. on, she will always smile and always like you said, keep the keep the, I, on the track, yeah, so. Joy, I tried to write you new lyrics to Joy to the World. I didn't finish, so maybe yeah. next year. <laughs> you got a whole year to work on it. I do. Joy's always the one that decorates everyone else's desk. Yeah. Yes. So, yeah, yes. She always takes it really into consideration. Happy birthday, Joy. Yeah. yeah. We hope you like your decorations. Here's a pretty picture for your birthday. Aww. Aww. Look at this. Yes. Okay, the dog's name's Bubba. Bubba. <laughs> that just fit in this picture. I love that. That is absolutely classic. Love to have that on a, a Christmas card. So thank you very much for the uh, the KSAC Connect picture this morning. Uh, we're actually seeing a couple of breaks in the clouds already, but that cloud cover has helped to keep temperatures up somewhat uh, instead of getting as cold as what we could have this morning. Like they've been talking about different story tomorrow. A few little leftover sprinkly showers maybe here and there off to the east, but most everything is continuing to work its way there off to the north. 55 Bernie stage comfort, 61 at the airport, 64. Since. And so, yes, we are still on the warm side, almost 20 above normal, but the drier air has come on in here, so it's much more pleasant. 10% left over, 20% left over, a little sprinkly shower off to the east, northeast, and we will drop down maybe a couple of more degrees. Then a lot of sunshine this morning, and we'll make it up to 64 at noon, and then just make it up to the upper 60s later on today. So it is going to be cooler than the past couple of days, but this is basically a normal temperature. So here's some of the showers that we had earlier this morning, and this is just the tail end of this massive 
solid, massive storm system covering the central portion of the country. This is producing blizzard-like conditions up there to the north, and this is what has pulled in some of that cooler air on the back side of it, that huge low right there. And we are going to be getting even colder tomorrow with the clear skies and the, uh, the light wind in the overnight hours. And then we get sort of a reinforcing little shot of this cooler air coming on in here Friday into the weekend and also some extra moisture trying to slide on in here for the weekend to give us a couple of showers. Now the big question what's going to be going on next week we will start off the week normal temperatures. Then this batch of really cold air is starting to work its way down from Canada. Still the question is, and this is not completely written in stone as of yet, how far south this gets. A couple of computer models have this thing coming right down on top of us. Another model has it just sort of grazing by us. So yes, it will be below normal next late next week and going into a Christmas weekend, but just how cold that is still and how long it sticks around, that's still uh, not yet completely determined 64 degrees today at noon breezy conditions and then a high temperature today 67 it is going to be windy today then it gets very cold tomorrow morning very cold friday morning we're going to be in the upper 60s again tomorrow plenty of sunshine clouds increase friday also with that next shot of cooler air coming in here 62 on friday and only 50 on saturday with a couple of showers around here so good day to stay inside Definitely. I will look for the heavier coat. Yes. Thanks, Mike. Right now we're at 651, 60 degrees. And we all know it is important to get up and move tomorrow on GMSA. The safest workouts for you based on your age group. Outside with live cam getting your Wednesday going. Yeah, the clouds are kind of hanging in there right now. Lots of folks on the road. We do traffic updates throughout all of Good Morning America, which is coming up after we wrap up GMSA. Welcome back, taking a quick look at TransGuide as things start to pick up traffic wise across the city of San Antonio, I-37 Pecan Valley, things looking pretty smooth there. Loop 410 and McCullough, things looking pretty solid right now for people making their way out. Now the big thing that we're following right now is this uh, crash that's being reported in the eastern part of Bear County, uh, past 1604 on the I-10 eastbound lanes being reported at I-10 eastbound at File Road and we're hearing that it's potentially an 18 wheeler that has overturned and that has blocked traffic there on the eastbound lanes. A disabled vehicle also being reported right here. So this is something that we will continue to follow throughout the morning. Mike, how's it Thank going? Thank you very much, sir. And still got some clouds hanging around here. They will be clearing out later on today. 60 here in town, mid 50s hill country, and it is breezy. It's going to stay breezy all day long. 64 at noon, 67 for a high temperature, and then get ready because it's going to be much colder tomorrow morning and Friday morning. Grab your heavy coat. And again, happy birthday to our executive producer, Joy Presley. Happy, happy, birthday. happy birthday. She's about to go on vacation. She said she might be back by the year 2024. Uh, I yeah, hope it's so. 2023. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we'll see, though. She's got a lot of time. I yes, need a lot too. of time left. Have a great day, guys.